good morning. Good to be with you guys again. It, these devotions have been a lot of fun to produce, and I know that Gage has worked really hard at getting it done for you. I got a text this morning uh, from someone in our church, and I'll let them go nameless, but uh, they were really grateful that uh, we're doing this, and uh, so I just want to pass that on to Gage and uh, back to the rest of you guys. You might enjoy uh, receiving these, and uh, but I want you to know that we all enjoy putting it together for you as well. Hey, I've got a verse I'd like to share with you guys this morning. It's in John chapter 4. A lot of things have happened. Jesus in chapter 3 has had a pretty intense conversation with a guy named Nicodemus. And uh, so Nick comes to him at night. I think we could call that Nick at night, couldn't we? I'm, anyway, so they have a, a good intense conversation. And it boils down to this. For the second time, Nick, Jesus says, um, you must be born again. What's born of the flesh is flesh, and what's born of the spirit is spirit. And then after that, Jesus and his few followers are out in the wilderness, the same area that John the Baptist is, and, and they're baptizing and making disciples. And a little bit of a scuffle comes up between the followers of John the Baptist and, and the followers of Jesus. Uh, Jesus wasn't baptizing anyone himself, but his disciples were. And as, as an intense kind of display of what was going on inwardly, and so it's an outward sign of an inward um, conversion that is taking place that people realize that they weren't pure before God, even if they were Jews. At any rate, so Jesus decides he's going to head on up to uh, Galilee. And this is how it starts. In verse 1, it says, Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee, but he needed to go through Samaria. You probably have heard about the good Samaritan. Well, this chapter four is going to be a story about a bad Samaritan who becomes good or a bad Samaritan who gets saved. At any rate, that phrase that Jesus needed to go through Samaria is quite a curious one. Uh, no respectful Jew needs to go through Samaria. They detested the Samaritans so much. They were one half breeds um, all the way back during the Babylonian captivity. So that was one strike against them. They, they had their own temple and their own place of worship up on Mount Gerasim. That was not where God had instructed them to worship or have a temple. So that's strike number two. They had their own high priest, so not the one that God had put in order. So three strikes and they're out. A respectful Jew would not go through Samaria but they would rather go across the Jordan River into a Gentile country than go through a Samaritan country. Go through a Gentile country all the way up north until they could cross back over the Jordan River to enter into the Galilean region. Why, why am I talking about this? Why did Jesus need to go to Samaria or through Samaria? And there's only one reason. It was one person. The Samaritan woman, the woman at the well, you know the story. It was a compelling reason. It wasn't an easy thing to do. It's not easy to go to our neighbor's house. It's not easy to go to a co-worker or a friend who has not entered into the kingdom of God through belief in Jesus Christ. Those things are not easy. But I want you to remember that in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that Jesus, Jesus said, you're going to receive the Holy Spirit, which you have if you're a Christian. And, and when you do, you're going to be witnesses unto me, or we would say you're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. And so when that actually took place, when that really happened, when 
the persecution began to scatter the, the, the Christian church beginning in Jerusalem, elsewhere, by the time that they got to Samaria, the groundwork had already been laid, the soil had already been tilled, none other than Jesus himself. This Samaritan woman becomes a believer in Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And then she goes to the village and, and people come out from the village and what little she knew about Jesus, she, she was a witness for him. And when those folks came out, they, come, they, they begged Jesus to stay, and he stayed for a couple more days. And, and then they, they say, well, now we believe, not just because of what the woman had told us, but because we heard Jesus our, our, for ourselves. I, I think it's important that we remember that Jesus said that we're to deny ourselves and to pick up our cross and follow him, even to Samaria place that's not comfortable, a place that's not easy, but compelled to because, because there's a person there that needs to hear about Jesus Christ. And who knows, they may turn out like the Samaritan woman to compel others to come to Jesus as well. But that's our responsibility, yours and mine, to follow Jesus even into Samaria and to represent him to be his disciple and to be his ambassador, to be his witness. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this simple little lesson that we find in John's Gospel, chapter 4. That we too need to go through our Samaria because you have someone there that we can be a witness that shares the gospel of Jesus Christ and allow you to do the remainder work. When Jesus left Nicodemus, the saving work hadn't yet been done, but we realized later on that it was completed. And so whether we have a Nicodemus experience or a woman at the well experience, we too need to go. So place that in our hearts today. And may we be obedient to your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch the devotion. And hey, let's go out there and represent our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, even in Samaria. God bless you guys. See you Sunday morning. Bye.